Hello everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Ranchero Fundo. But before that, this video is brought to you by Donald Smart and Darren Manville. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So the Ranchero Fundo map can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Ranchero Fundo, a map that has a pleasant climate that resembles some regions of Brazil with small and medium sized fields and more pronounced relief, but can also be used to venture out as a farmer and enjoy large farm areas. In addition, you can also expand those areas and build out other things. In addition, you have the ability to work with wood and do some forestry. In addition, there are some factories on the map where you can get into various productions and you know what in addition to that well this map has several sell points that include a bakery a supermarket bale sell point sawmill sugarcane factory a country restaurant all located close to the city this map includes multiple other aspects including 84 fields 10 of which are set up to plant irrigated rice and then some open areas. There are two new crops on the map being rice and black beans, a custom animal feed, and this map has been set up with a Brazilian crop calendar. As we can see, this map also has seven required mods. Those are Package Mega Silo, Bison Z056, Southern Brazil Woodhouse, Southern Brazil Silos Package, Flower and Feed Factory, Three Disc Plow, and a Yogurt Factory. Now, in addition to those required mods, we are going to be looking at the map with the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, feed lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. If you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you're going to find that all the farms are pre-built exactly how you find them here. You do not start out by owning any land, and you also do not have any starting machinery in those alternate game modes. I will tell you, if you load this map up on a lower end system, you will find that you're going to have a nice solid 60 frames per second wherever you are on this map. You should have zero issues whatsoever in playing this map on pretty much any system that's going to run Farm Sim 22. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. And as the description said, for the most part, this map is composed of small to medium sized fields. There are a few larger fields over here to the north and east. This map does have all the standard crops available to us in FS22, as well as black bean and rice, which have been added. And then if you happen to have the platinum expansion enabled, for some interesting reason, you're only getting red beets and carrots coming up here. Parsnips, where'd they go? Not really quite sure on that. If we go ahead and take a look at our lands overview, we start up by owning farmland ID 91. That is the main starting farm. In addition, we have farmland ID 92 and 17. This map has some floodable rice fields, which we've already mentioned. One of those is going to be right here at Farmland ID 92. Another one is going to be located here at Farmland ID 88, 85, and 84. Speaking of Farmland ID 84, that is where our second farm is going to be located. We can buy Farmland ID 84 for $147,920. And we can buy Farmland ID 91, our starting farm in any alternate game mode, for $167,184. Now, in addition to that, there are two areas that simply just have farmhouses. They're going to be located at Farmland ID 94 for $58,752, and Farmland ID 95, which you can be bought for $41,136. There is reference to some forestry. They're going to be farmland ID 90, 80, and 81. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any fields, what fields are included, and lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? We can now go and cross-reference that with our field calculator screen. This is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. And then with respect to the precision farming soil map, this map is making use of the generic soil map. So let's go ahead and see how that is being applied to these fields. 
Now it's rather interesting here because with the soil map exposed, a significant portion of these fields are not showing up the soil types. And that tells me that there's something going on here with respect to the terrain layer here, or basically the, the, the area where, for lack of a better term, the field definitions are set up. So we have fields over here in the extreme southeast corner. This is close to our starting farm after all. And then one field right here, 17, which we own at the start, but none of these other fields are popping up. And we don't have to own the fields in order to expose the soil map when I run the script command that I typically use. So I do believe that we have some sort of terrain issue. And to kind of back that up, this map, and I was noticing this when I was going through my pre-recording testing, we've got lots of Lua errors on this map. And we've really done nothing other than take a look at the PDA and take a look at the precision farming soil map here. And you can see we have Lua errors related to um, the density map modifier, density map utility Lua, I don't even have a clue why it's going D, Auto Builder, Cache, SVN, yada, 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 because nothing is on the D drive with respect to this game. So I am really confused as to what's going on here. And quite frankly, am a bit surprised. Not going to say disappointed, but I should be. A bit surprised that this passed through Giants testing in this state. I honestly don't know if you should play this map at this point or wait for an update. But honestly, given the point we are between now and the release of FS25, there probably isn't gonna be an update to this map because I was checking the map in testing thread or the mods in testing thread today. And it said we were, I think nine days away or nine days pending testing. We're less than nine working days away from Farm Sim 25's release. And I really feel bad for all of those maps and mods that are still pending testing that quite frankly have a pretty big chance of not releasing until after the new game releases. But we're not going to dive into that discussion. We're going to continue on here. With respect to our crop counter, we do have a custom crop counter here. You can see we're starting in February as opposed to our typical August start point. And then we can you're going to have to study down here through all the various planting and harvesting schedules. I do want to note though, that we do have a growth schedule for cotton, which is going to be very pertinent here in a few moments. With respect to our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell most, but sadly not all of the basic crops available to us in FS22. Fat cotton, we do not have the ability to sell, but we do have a growth and planting schedule for that in the crop counter. So we are going to take a little bit of points off of that. In addition, we do not have the ability to sell wool, nor do we have the ability to sell our stones. Now we don't deduct points with respect to stone processing, but that is something I do want to point out. With respect to all of our base game productions, we do have the ability to sell those. We do have the ability to buy and sell lime. We also have the ability to sell pig food. We also have added crops of black bean and rice, as we have already said. With respect to our farm production pack, we do not have the ability to sell that, but we do have the ability to sell our platinum expansion production items. There are no platinum expansion production items pre-placed on the map, but we do have the ability to sell those if we should get into that type of production. We also do have the ability to sell our premium expansion crops and productions. If you are into pumps and hoses, we do have the ability to getting rid of your separated manure. We also have some other custom productions in FUBA. Not really sure what that is, but we can sell at supermarket. Those playing with straw harvest, we do have the ability to sell our hay and straw pellets. We also have, as far as productions on the map, yogurt, strawberry yogurt, grape yogurt, and chocolate yogurt. We have aged cheese, as well as in our premium expansion crops. And here we have parsnips popping up, but for whatever reason, we can't grow parsnips on the map. We have a very modest list of starting machinery. It's all new, none of it is leased, but some of it does require a little bit of maintenance. We also have 25 cows on the starting farm. We do have contracts available to us on this map. We do not own any production chains 
and this map does not have any collectibles. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the Fint Favorite 515C small tractor. We have a Bison Super Z056 Harvester and the Harvester header for that. We have the three disc plow with a working width of 1.2 meters. We have the Amazon Sintia 3000 Super Cedar. And then we have the 1200 kilogram front weight. Now, with respect to mods and DLCs, we do have the three disc plow and the bison, which are listed as the required mods. And then with respect to with the map, we do have a palette of modded tree saplings. Now, as far as our starting farm, it's gonna be located in the southeast corner of the map. Whereas we start here at the shop in the northwest corner of the map. So I'm just gonna quickly tab down to our harvester and uh, see if I can't get outside of here. I was finding out that that building, which is where our silo is, doesn't seem to have triggers on the inside of the doors. You have to be able to open the doors from the outside. So here we are over here at our starting farm now. We have our starting tractor. We have our cedar and our small plow. We have our farmhouse right up here on this rise. Our sleep trigger is going to be inside and to the right. So we have our sleep trigger located right here. What we think should be the ward rev trigger. There we go. It's a little sensitive if we get too close. We can open the windows. If we're too far away, we're going to be at the sleep trigger or closing our bedroom door. We have another shed here for farm machinery. Now everything at this farm and actually at the secondary farm as well can be sold, including the fencing. So that is always good to see. Inside our silo building, we have our harvester. We have our grain dump point. And then around the side, we have our silo output pipe. And remember, like I said earlier, there doesn't appear to be a door trigger on the inside of this silo. We're gonna have to open this from the outside. Over here by the handle, actually. Now we do have cows here. And we're gonna get to those cows by going up this road. So we have our milk trigger on the side. We have our food in straw trough. We have our delivery point for a total of 120 cows. So here's our food trough. This is our straw trigger. And then this road will continue to take us up and around the hill. Okay. And I wanna go ahead and come up here another little building up here but what I'm really up here for is I want to show you the flooded field that is up here so here we have kind of a pond and we have a pipe and this I spent quite a little time in trying to figure this out so you can see there's water coming out of this pipe well if we come over here and we look down the hill, okay? We have the river, and then we have a water wheel that is driving a pump that is then taking this pipe and it's going in that direction. And up there is where that little pond is located. Okay, but before we do that, we have another floodable field located down here. And this is on land that we own at the start. And we're gonna come over here to this location and we're going to left click. We're gonna get a little bit of an animation there. And then this is going to flood. 
And now we have this flooded and we can do our thing with rice. Let's come back up here to the top of the hill. Then we have our little pond here. We have that same activation trigger. But before we open this up, I want to show you. Way down here, we have one, two, and three. These are three floodable fields, and the flood trigger is up here on this hill. So let's activate that and fly over here real fast. And now we see those have filled up with water. Now you may ask yourself, how do you seed rice? Well, you see our planter that we own at the start. To seed her. So it does have the ability to do rice and black bean. This one has the Power Hero attachment included with it, whereas the one we own, for whatever reason, does not. And then with respect to harvesting your rice, you're going to harvest your rice and your black bean with your traditional grain harvester. Now with that, I want to... Make my way over here to where the second farm is located. And that's going to be basically directly to the west of where our first farm is. And then here we have the farmhouse that I talked about. Farmland ID 94. And then we have another farmhouse here, farmland ID 95. And directly in front of us is our secondary farm. Now we'll need to buy this land in order to then be able to manipulate the triggers. And now that we've done that, we're gonna be able to open our silo. So we have our same building, so we have our dump point. We're gonna have then our output pipe here along the side. We have our farmhouse. Inside here we have our wardrobe trigger and our sleep trigger. And then we've got a few sheds just like we had in our other farm also here. So that is the secondary farm. Now then, as I mentioned, we do have a floodable field. It's also on this farmland. It is located right here. Now we have the trigger for that right on the other side of this rise. So again, we're going to left click. And we'll see our water levels rise up over here pretty quick. And then if we want to unflood it, we're just going to come back over here. Left click again. We're gonna block our water off and the water is gonna recede pretty darn quick. Then here we have a pumping station and we're going to activate the pumping station and it's going to pump water up into these fields right here. So we'll come up here, we'll left click and here we go. And we'll see that pop in there. So now that is full of water. And then you'll notice, like I said, when we did the precision farming soil map, these are all fields, but when I, when I fly over them, I'm not getting the field info screen. We just have the ground grass texture, but there's no actual grass or anything planted here. So I would not expect to see any AI crops grown on any of these fields because they're not truly defined as fields. And again, I'm a little surprised that this cleared Giants testing. And I got to wonder if they just not just shoving it out the door in order to get it out the door for FS25 releases. And if that's the case, it's, it's a little frustrating. 
a little frustrating for me. So here we have another farmhouse. This is just a standalone farmhouse. We have our sleep trigger and our wardrobe trigger. This area will need to be purchased in order to have access to those triggers. And let's just keep following our way up the river along this road. It's then going to take us into the town area. Now, as far as our scoring metric goes, with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such, we have four productions built into this map. We have a sawmill, yogurt processor, aged cheese factory, as well as a flour and feed factory. In fact, speaking of that, let's go ahead and check our animal food overview because there was a reference to having custom animal feed. In fact, our cows are going to need to require sugarcane in their TMR. Sheep are going to also accept mineral feed and silage. Pig food, we have mineral feed added to the base for pig food. And then we have pretty standard stuff with respect to our root crops with the addition of lettuce, tomatoes being added to this and sugarcane. Horses also have mineral food added as well as corn. And then chickens, you're going to have corn and I believe barley added to this list as well. This is going to be the sugarcane cell point. And then we're going to be able to draw out digestate from this tank right here. Here we have the ranch grain mill with our dump point inside. We have our supermarket cell point with our dump point around the side. We've got a loading dock literally right off the road. And that is going to be for our bread bakery. And then this is where we started this all out at, at the vehicle dealer. Let's go ahead and go inside and pick up a Mahindra. Just see where things spawn at. I'm going to spawn here right out front. Very easy access to get out of here. Going to be a little bit limited as far as the width of the road getting out of town, but that's going to be about it. We have our maintenance trigger here for our dealer, but where is the actual dealer? I got to wonder if it's right here at this concrete pad. It is indeed. Now, while we do have a little bit of a change in texture here, it would have been nice to have seen the corner markers. Here we have the feed factory. So let me go ahead and buy all of these productions. So we have a fairly standard sawmill. It's going to accept logs and it's going to produce planks and wood chips. We have our yogurt factory, which is going to accept milk, strawberries, grapes, and chocolate. And with that output, we're going to make regular unflavored yogurt, strawberry yogurt, grape yogurt, and chocolate yogurt. We also have the ability of making butter and cheese here at the yogurt factory. We're going to make premium aged cheese over at the aged cheese factory. And our flour and feed factory is going to be both our flour mill, as well as we're going to make pig food from simply corn and soybeans. And we're going to make fuba out of corn itself. So we have our interactive icon there. We have our dump point. We have our pallet spawn point. This is then going to be also a dump point for... Not really sure what input this might be because I would accept, expect all of our grain inputs to go there. And that's pretty all the inputs that are going to be accepted here. 
We have our animal dealer located right here. Some nice animated cows in there. Then down the hill, we have our sawmill. This is where we get our wood chips. They're gonna pile up there. We have our dump point here for our logs, our wood cell trigger, our interactive icon, and then we have our pallet spawn point right over here. And then we're gonna come back up and around the hillside and this is going to where we find our yogurt factory and our cheese, aged cheese factory. So we have our dump point here for aged cheese for our milk, our interactive icon, and then our pallet spawn point for our aged cheese. This is going to be our yogurt factory. So we have our dump point here, our pallet spawn point for our yogurts, our butter in our milk, or our butter in our cheese, our interactive icon here. And then this is gonna be for some grain selling. And this is gonna be the cooperative sell point. Now I believe we completely bypassed the requisite lime mine that seemingly all the South American maps have. As we make our way down in here, we do have some lime that's just piled up. We will need to own this land in order to make use of this lime, or we can simply purchase our lime from here. And we do have a few more points of interest to the east of town, all the way on the north side of the map. And while we're making our way over there, we'll talk about more of our scoring metric. As I mentioned, we're giving the map a full point with respect to production being built in. We're giving the map 75% of a full point, or 0.75, with respect to the ability to sell all of our base game crops, animal outputs, and productions. Because, well, we are a little short. Because we do not have the ability to sell cotton or wool. Here we have our fuel point. And then this shows us having access to this truck let's say we can enter the vehicle so that may be a pickup truck that we can make use of that we do not own and here we have the restaurant cell point with respect to the farms to be customizable we're going to be giving the map a full point because we can indeed sell everything here at the starting farm as well as at the secondary farm. Down a little bit more. Here we have another grain stall point. And this one is identified as the field and grain south, even though it's very much in the north part of the map. Now, I will admit, I have not seen this area up until now. This whole area has eluded me. This may be a big, larger farm. It's Farmland ID 75. So indeed it is. I completely missed this area when I was looking at this map before I even started recording. So here we have our silo dump point. And we have our silo fill point right there. We have our farmhouse sleep trigger and wardrobe trigger and then we've got some nice storage machinery here as well now let's go and just check and see if we can't delete these things because if we can't then that is going to impact our ability with respect to the farm being customizable real quick live test so we can indeed sell everything which is always a good thing to see and while we're in here, let's run down through build mode. So we do have some buildings that we can put down. Most of those are aspects of the required mods, but we do have a couple 
that are a part of the map itself, as well as some silos that are listed as required mods. If we go to production, we have the flower and feed factory, the yogurt factory. Those are all parts of those required mods. We have a custom generator that is part of this map, and that is the, um, the water pump that pumps up the water there. We do have also some custom landscaping items with respect to our ground textures. Really standard ground textures, a few more than normal, but we have custom trees. So we have mango trees, we have eucalypto trees, we have a stone pine, we have a volume tree, we have oak stage three, we have a queen palm, and a, uh, yeah, whatever that is. And then we also have some custom foliage, some custom plants that we can put down. So we have grass, bush, conifer, daylily, daisies, another form of daisies, bluebell, Edelweiss, Apera, yeah, Kinopodium, Rumex, Cirrusim, Papahavaros, Meadowgrass, Mata, Bluebell, Camps, I don't know what that is, okay. Then we have Taboa. And then another bush. So we got some custom foliage there as well. Then right down here on the map border, we have our final particular cell point. Buildings where properly are using the new texture unique as well as ground textures. Well, we're going to have to go and and talk about that a little bit. For the most part, the buildings on this map are not, in my opinion, using the new texturing technique. So we're going to give the map just one quarter of a point. So here we have our dump point for our final cell point. And that is gonna be named the limestone buyer. So we're gonna be able to take limestone from the mine and bring it all the way up here and make a little bit of money and sell it here at the buyer. Trigger and interactive areas being clearly marked. We're also gonna to have to take a quarter of a point off for that because well, we don't have that marker down at the dealership. It would be nice to have seen that. Otherwise, everything else feels pretty clearly marked to me. That's going to wrap this map up with a score of 3.75 out of 5. Now, like I said, I'm a little cautious, a little skeptical with respect to suggesting you play this map because of the fact that all of these fields that you see here in white, they're not technically fields. And I don't feel that the AI is going to grow anything on these. I don't feel that you're going to get anything growing on these until you actually carve them up with a plow using the create fields function. Because we're not getting the field info pop up here. This is not a ground, a field texture. This is simply a grass ground texture, not even a grass foliage texture. So I really, really am surprised this map made us all the way through testing out to release let me know your thoughts down in the comments below with respect to this map and until next time happy farming